Care. Well, joining us here in studio to discuss this, the aforementioned orthodontist, our friend Dr. Larry Kawa, the plaintiff in this lawsuit, president of the American Courage Pack and the owner of Kawa Orthodontics. We're glad to have you in studio, Larry. We're joined via Skype uh, from Washington by uh, Hans von Spakovsky, uh, pardon me, Hans, Hans von Spakovsky, the senior legal fellow of the Heritage Foundation and co-author of Obama's Enforcer, Eric Holder's Justice Department. Gentlemen, we thank you both for joining us. Hans, again, my apology uh, for uh, mispronouncing your name earlier. Larry, you spell it out for us from your perspective. Give us an update on your lawsuit and what does Monday's ruling mean for that lawsuit? Well, the predicate of the lawsuit is that Article 1 says that only Congress can make or change the law. Article 2 of the Constitution says the President has an affirmative fiduciary duty to enforce the existing laws whether he likes them or not. Simply put, it says in, in the, uh, the ACA that on January 1, 2014, the employer mandate shall, not may, but shall go into effect. There's nothing you could do by executive action to better enforce that date by making it a date two years later, because in so doing, this president has done nothing short of replace his policy judgment for the policy judgment of Congress. Now, in order to, uh, to stop him, you need to file a suit in the federal courts under what's called the Administrative Procedure Act, which is what we did on October 1, 2013. Since then, our case has graduated to the 11th Circuit Court in Atlanta, Georgia, and a three-judge panel of federal judges have just made a landmark decision to give us the uh, privilege of bringing oral arguments to them in fighting for standing on our case. Well, we appreciate uh, the fact that you've been willing to get involved, Larry, as a citizen, as a concerned citizen about this. Let me turn to Hans there uh, at the Heritage Foundation. Hans, from a legal perspective, what are the implications? How important is it for the court to grant this oral argument, to move forward on this lawsuit? Well, it's, it's very important. I think the lower court actually made a mistake. You know, they dismissed the lawsuit, that is the federal district court, without getting to the merits, saying that uh, the plaintiff in this case, uh, the orthodontics uh, practice, didn't have standing to sue. It was kind of an odd decision because uh, the, the practice showed that they had suffered injury. They had anticipatory legal compliance costs getting ready for the employer mandate. That was sufficient standing for the original Obamacare case, which you may recall, J.D., that was filed down in Florida and went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. And in that case, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, where we are now, said that, yeah, that's sufficient standing to sue. So the, the district court's decision, I think, was in error, and, and it was kind of odd given the prior history of the original Obamacare case. Well, Hans, we appreciate your perspective there, giving us a, a history and uh, some legal analysis of what perhaps should have happened at the, uh, at the outset of this. Uh, Larry, let me bring it back to you because politics and public policy go hand in hand. It's no coincidence that you're getting a lot of support from a lot of conservatives, a, a lot of Republicans, including Florida's junior Senator Marco Rubio, who may be looking at a White House run. He, he says of the lawsuit and what's going on here, quoting now, Obamacare is a disastrous law that's increasing patient costs, limiting patient choices, killing jobs, and outright violating the Constitution. Obamacare needs to be repealed and replaced, and I believe legal challenges to it will continue to show its flaws. Larry, from your perspective, Showing flaws is not really what you want to do. You want to stop this thing cold, correct? Well, I want to say that the president doesn't have the right to have an authoritative overreach and change the laws as a one-man Congress. He has changed the law 38 times through illegal executive action since its inception. And one of two things, it has to be true since he's the architect of this law. Either he didn't know what he was doing then or he doesn't know what he's doing now, but America deserves better than to be led by a president that either didn't or doesn't know what he's doing. And uh, no sooner do you mention the changes in the law, uh, John, you pointed this out in an email, that now the president, what, looked to the territories to suddenly uh, give the territories a break on Obamacare. Yeah, yesterday the, the announcement came. It looks like the territories, U.S. territories, have been cut free from their obligations in Obamacare. And, you know, I don't know if this is the strategy here, Larry, but slowly but surely the, the, law, the law is eroding away on its own. Well, every time he makes a fix to try to change the law, 10 other things go wrong. It's like trying to wash the car in the rain. 
But uh, I think that the law is something that will collapse under its own weight. And while no one ever wants to see an American law fail, I also don't believe in leaving America politically paralyzed. Every painful part of this law has been delayed until after the midterm elections. And the president said that the reason that he gave uh, what he calls transition relief mm -hmm. to large employers, those like myself that have north of 50 employees, is because we needed help even though none of us ever asked for it. He knew that it was going to be a political disaster since not one, one Republican voted for it, and that's the reason that he chose to uh, delay the pain was for political convenience. But y you can't both want to create jobs while you punish the job creators, and I think he had come to his senses temporarily and wanted to make sure that his Democratic cronies got, got reelected, and that's why he waived it until after the midterms. Well, yeah. let's let's turn back to Hans from his perspective there in Washington, there at the Heritage Foundation. Hans, you're not very far away from either the Supreme Court or the uh, the Federal Appeals Court for D.C. or Capitol Hill. I'm just wondering. The discussion continues. Uh, can Obamacare be repealed? And the talk has gone on and efforts have been made in the House, but now there's talk of trying to modify or live with it. Or you had the, the theory put forth by my partner John Boehner here that it may just erode of its own inefficiencies. What is the surest way in your mind to eliminate Obamacare? Well, unfortunately, even though the House, as you know, has voted many times to repeal it, uh, that has not gone through in the Senate because of Harry Reid. If, uh, if control changes in November and the Senate also votes to repeal it, the problem is that, of course, the President would veto uh, any bill that passed Congress to repeal Obamacare, and it's not clear that in the Senate, for example, they would have enough votes to overcome his veto. So, frankly, these kind of lawsuits, which are uh, chipping away at Obamacare for the for the moment, are really the only where, way to proceed forward to try to get rid of this this terrible law. Probably the worst piece of legislation ever passed by the United States Congress. Well, gentlemen, I don't know how to feel. I th you just referred to me as uh, John Boehner. Honored to consider. Oh, I am so sorry. Those it must be the cold the medication <laughs> I had. This is John Bogman. I served with John Boehner. Uh, sorry for that premature. Uh, I, I, hey, I'll take it. Uh, Speaker of the House, that's a job I think a lot of folks would like to have. Well, maybe not. I don't know. We could, we could, we could see. Hey, here, and you don't have to be an elected member of the House to be the, to be the Speaker. This that's is right. true. The, the Constitution, it just says the House shall choose, in that old way of spelling, C-H-U-S-E, the House shall choose its Speaker. You're <laughs> right about that. So interesting, maybe interesting note there. But, uh, gentlemen, and we'll start with you up there, Hans, about this. You know, we had the announcement yesterday, Ron Johnson's lawsuit has been tossed out. Of course, we also have on the other end of the spectrum here, the Supreme Court striking down the president's use of action. Somewhere in between there, we would hope there'd be some sort of push uh, and advancement on, on Obamacare. But based on those two widely variant uh, possibilities here, where do you see the Boehner lawsuit coming down? Well, the big problem the Boehner lawsuit has is establishing standing. Look, in this case, uh, the orthodontics practice has the ability to establish standing. In other words, they can show a concrete, specific injury. Uh, members of Congress have a difficult time doing that. They, 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 in past cases, have had their cases thrown out by the Supreme Court because the Supreme Court has said, look, you can, you can make claims about the unconstitutionality of something, but that's not good enough. You have to show a specific, concrete injury. And that is the biggest problem that Boehner's lawsuit will have to overcome, and, and frankly, I, I'm not sure they can do that. Well, Larry, maybe you're the guy legitimately as an employer, you've got the standing. About 30 seconds remain. Uh, what do you hope to, to gain here? Well, right now the score is 35 to 0 in our favor. We have submitted 35 cases of case law that support that we should have standing. Uh, the defense has uh, submitted zero cases that would support that they have standing. So with a 35 to zero score, it would be really hard for a federal judge to substantiate that they're gonna side with the side that got shut out. So I believe that we're gonna get standing. I believe we already have it. We just need the judges to recognize that. Well, we'll keep our eye on this, Larry. We thank you here. Hans, we thank you in Washington. More is straight ahead.